Hi and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Andor Professional Tripod from Amazon. The retail price is £69.99. That's Great British Pounds Sterling of course. Um, don't know what the equivalent is in dollars. I haven't checked but whatever the current exchange rate is I'm guessing. And it is a Chinese made tripod, it's aluminium and um, this of course is just the box. Inside this are a couple of bags that the tripod came in and that's all we need to know about that because it's a box, it's boring. Inside of that is a bag, a nicely padded um, Cordura type bag with an adjustable strap so it can be casually slung over your shoulder like so. I wanted a tripod that I could use for traveling around, that I could hook onto my camera bag that wasn't too heavy. As it turns out, this is a little bit bigger than I anticipated, but that is entirely my fault for not getting a tape measure and actually checking the dimensions, which are clearly displayed on the Amazon website. But that aside, I'm not disappointed. I'm not upset about that at all. So we undo the zip, and inside is the tripod in question. It has foam padding on all three legs, which is nice. The one that I'm filming on at the moment has foam padding on one leg only. So if you happen to grab a hold of any of the other legs and it's really cold outside, it's quite unpleasant. It's not like the end of the world or anything, but it's a bit unpleasantly cold. So foam padding, nice to grip, um, to carry and what have you. This is just a padded Cordura bag. So nothing too exciting there. As you can see, it's of the flip over type. So the, um, the three legs flip over and to put it into tripod mode, you flip them all around and press in the plunger type stoppers. And that gives you your standard tripod. You can pull those out and adjust that to another two positions so you can have it so it's literally almost flat like so or the next one down which is like so or your pretty much conventional tripod now the one that this camera is on doesn't do that for example that's one of the things that uh, I find restrictive about it in terms of what it does and then over here we undo this and we've got the center column which slides down and up accordingly and obviously for stowing it's up and then the legs fold up as well that can be tightened. We've got another little knob here which allows that to swivel and then we've got a, a ball head which swivels obviously 360 degrees. It has a slot to allow it to turn completely 90 degrees and then another one which allows this to swivel with degree gradations printed on it and a little pointer in a cutout which we'll show in close-up shortly. It has an Arca Swiss type plate fastening and the fastening on the bottom has a little loop which allows finger tightening which so many tripod um, plates are missing and it's frustrating and they have a little slot for a screwdriver type thing or for an allen wrench which is great it's all fine and dandy but if you don't happen to have those sometimes it can be a bit of a bloody nuisance tightening the things it has a, um, a spirit level bubble built into the tripod head and the obvious intention of that is that you can get the tripod flat. However, that doesn't appear at first glance to be level. I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that, but at first glance doesn't appear to be level. But that aside, it seems to work very, very well. Another nifty little feature this has is, if I can get this to do its thing, you can unscrew the ball head like so and you can unscrew this specially marked leg like so you can then attach the ball head to the specially marked leg thusly and et voila you have a monopod how cool is that so you've got a tripod and a monopod in one, obviously height adjustable because you've got the, uh, the three section legs with flip lock clasps, I'm happy to see. 
I have in the past had a tripod with the twist lock ones. I'm just not a big fan of them personally. I guess that's all really personal preference, but I've always kind of worried about over tightening them, damaging them, stressing them, that kind of thing. Um, having been a mechanic in the past, I have been known to unnecessarily over tighten things. What can I say? Um, but this is good and sturdy rubber stoppers on the feet. It doesn't have spikes, unfortunately. That would have been a nice extra little feature. It's anodized black aluminium or aluminium for you guys across the pond. And, um, and it's, it's pretty good, pretty nice and light. So if you were just carrying the monopod, for example, you would barely feel the weight of that. It's, you know, it's light as a feather. But the whole tripod as a whole is not that heavy. I will get an actual weight for you. I'll put it on the scales and get an actual all-in weight. Obviously, there's a bit more weight in the in the head, which I almost dropped there, whoops. That would have been uh, embarrassing, getting that all scratched up before I even used it properly. Um, so we'll tighten that back on there. And there we have it. We're gonna have a look at it close up in just a moment, but you've seen roughly the features that it has and just to kind of give you an idea of the actual extended height, this thing is massive. Extends to a height much, much greater than I will probably ever need uh, because you've got this bit here and then this bit which extends up here. And I believe that's, yeah, that's, there you go. The, the head of the tripod is right the way up here, way off, off the frame there. So it's very high. So if you ever feel the urge to take photographs looking through the viewfinder whilst on a step ladder, this is the tripod for you. So yes, it's very, very tall. I cannot imagine you ever needing a tripod taller than this. One other thing that this tripod does, which I like very, very much, I'm just gonna pop this on here to demonstrate this, but the base unscrews, just a plastic ring, and it unscrews quickly, simply, and easily, like so. It has a spring-loaded hook for hanging a counterweight on, which again, we'll see in close-up shortly. But then we loosen this, take this out of here like so, and we can reinsert this and feed it in from underneath. So you've got low level. So you can then spread the legs of the tripod like so, take a low level photographic um, shot, which is nice. But that's not the reason I bought it. The reason I bought it is, well, that's partly the reason I bought it, but the main reason I bought it is for this feature here. Now, this is a feature I've wanted on a tripod for a long while, and that's to allow the head to be fixed at a 90 degree angle. And it's one of those things where, until you're in a situation where you think that would be really handy, you don't realize how handy that would be. And there have been several situations when I've thought I could really do with a feature like this. And of course, once in this orientation, you would fit this back in place, you would hang your counterweight on here, so that counters the, the weight of the camera, so it's not going to topple with the weight of the camera. And for a counterweight, you can use your camera bag. You've got it with you anyway, with your extra lenses and such in. It's perfect. Uh, you can, of course, use sandbags or any, any number of things, whatever you happen to have with you. But this is the... Um, this is the thing that sold it to me. This is the thing that I wanted. As I said, it's got a retail price of £69.99, which is not the cheapest tripod in the world. You can get cheaper tripods, but you cannot, to my knowledge, at the time of filming this, get a cheaper tripod that does all that, and especially with the 90 degree angle alteration. The next cheapest one I found was 90 something pounds, uh, sterling and then the next cheapest one after that was a K&F concept one um, which was 140 pounds and I've read a couple of reviews on that and people actually mentioned certain parts of that being rough and a bit unfit poorly finished I can't say because I haven't handled one personally but 70 pounds 140 pounds big difference you're talking double the price for something you know that does what this one does the only criticisms I have about this currently are that this section here is plastic and I'm kind of concerned about the um, possible longevity problems with it but I think with sensible use that would be okay 
but we'll see how that goes. Included in the bag are some very brief instructions, which are not actually instructions at all, just an overview of the tripod with numbers and descriptions of what those numbered parts mean, and two Allen wrenches, which are obviously um, for the bolts for the legs and the bolts, the Allen bolts here and here and here for the tripod head of the Arca Swiss type plate. So, and um, that is, oh, why are you not going on? Ah, that's why. Um, that's literally everything that's in the bag, as I say, the, uh, the box and the bag is the boring bit. But what we're gonna do now is scoot in close and I have a good detailed look at this. Taking a look up close and personal as it were, we'll just have a quick look at the flip lock clasps and the legs as you can see slide nice and smoothly this is a smooth anodized aluminium black anodized aluminium a really nice finish nice sort of printing of the logo on the leg there this particular one is the leg that unscrews so this one here you can see you've got the lock and unlock and it's essentially just a screw thread so you give that an unscrew like so and this gives you your monopod leg your individual leg this is the only one of the three that does come off so obviously you only need one and uh, that gives you an option of a monopod these are the locking clips press in pull out nice thick chunky easy to grip easy to press in and obviously pulled out completely you can swivel this all the way around like so and then looking at the head of the tripod Slightly difficult to see, but here we've got gradations on this ball head. So you can adjust by degrees if you need to do so. Um, we have got an Arca Swiss type plate. So any standard Arca Swiss plate will fit onto this with a screw down fastener. A uh, spirit level bubble in the screw down fastener for when it's in its 90 degree angle. Spirit level bubble in the top plate. And as I said earlier, that doesn't actually look level. It looks like there's a slight tilt on that, but I might be wrong. As I say, I've not, uh, not tried that. And then we have got three thumb screws with a nice knurled rubberized grip. So this one you undo and that allows rotation here like so. Tighten that up and that locks that. This one and this one both seem to lock the ball head. I don't know if this is just kind of like an additional security feature, but both of these seem to lock the ball head. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, it doesn't explain anything in the instruction manual. I will have to look at the QR code and see if there's any more information there. It's perhaps just an additional security feature so that you've got two points of contact squeezing in and clamping the ball head on either side. That's possibly what the case is. Uh, your standard Arca Swiss type fitting, like I said, with um, a screw fastener sprung carriage so it pops out and the plate just lifts away. It's got these Allen bolts which stop it sliding, which is standard for Arca Swiss plates. And then this here with the, uh, the actual little flip up piece which allows you to hand tighten that nicely and there's a lot of tripods that miss that that don't actually have that which is a shame so um, that tightens up and makes it nice and secure you can see here on the legs your um, ratchet points which allow you to fix this in uh, three different positions Oops. sorry I'm trying to keep this in frame for you and I'm sort of looking over like so and obviously you just pull those to unlock and swing it all the way back around and then this bit here is your plastic collar which also can swivel in addition to your ball head so you've got an, a nail nut there allows that to turn and then this one here allows your column to slide in and out again this nice anodized black aluminium finish making it nice and smooth in action the only concern I have currently is this collar because it's plastic, but it is quite thick and sturdy and provided it's not over tightened, it should be okay. Um, I think that should be okay. Hopefully that will stand up to use and abuse well. And then the final thing to look at up close 
is this here which I will just quickly unscrew and uh, this is not obviously going to bear a massive amount of weight when it's upright because it's on plastic threads but it just needs to um, to work for counterweights and the like so if you pull that there you've got a spring loaded hook as you can see so you can hang your camera bag or a sandbag or something similar to stabilize the tripod in its upright position or use as a counterweight in its 90 degree position there are several models in the Andor range if you look on uh, Amazon um, I don't have any affiliate links I have no affiliation with this I, I bought this tripod myself I'm not a big fan of reviews where oh this company reached out to me and sent me this blah 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 and here's my my honest unbiased review because you just think mm, is it though is it really though uh, but that's maybe that's just me so I'm not a big fan of reviews like that I like to watch reviews where somebody has gone and spent their hard-earned on a product and they will give you a review as it stands what I'm going to do now now, now that you've had a good look at it is I'm going to set this tripod up side by side with the tripod that this camera is currently sitting on uh, to give you a comparison of the sizes and uh, just so you can see the sort of similarities because they're about the same similar they're about you know they're very similar in in terms of the operating size but this one is or certainly feels considerably lighter as I say I will give those away in a moment so these two tripods side by side as you can see the Andor is actually higher in its collapsed column state so it is actually taller than my Opticron which is uh, the one that this camera was mounted on just a moment ago. The Opticron I've had for years, it's been an absolutely rock solid tripod. I really, really like it, but it's not the lightest tripod in the world and the legs only open to your standard position. As you can see there, they don't open any wider than that. And it has a standard sort of standard sort of pan and tilt and all that kind of thing. And it's great if you want to do smooth pans for video. And what have you uh, obviously something like that is going to work better than a ball head will and um, as I say it's been a rock-solid tripod it's oh, crikey uh, 18 20 years old maybe and it's been really really good and sturdy and solid it does have a sort of geared crank handle for winding up the column which is kind of nice but in my experience not really very necessary uh, it's it's sort of nice. It's it's interesting, but not really necessary. Similarly, you can actually unscrew this base and turn this upside down, but of course you're limited by the fact that you can't widen the legs any more than they are. So let's extend this one now, and let's just have a look. Let's scoot back again so we can see this. Uh, but again, that's the two tripods in their extended state, and as you can see, the Andor is hugely taller uh, much to my surprise I thought they were about the same size I cannot actually imagine you ever needing a tripod that's that's taller than this ever for any reason I really can't um, not without having to carry a really tall step ladder around with you you know uh, obviously you can always mount your camera and then tether it to um, but via Wi-Fi to your phone or trigger it with a remote shutter but I, I would imagine there's very few situations where you would actually need that kind of height. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've just never had to use a tripod at that kind of height. So that's those in the fully extended positions. I'll just show you them both side by side in their collapsed positions now. Now if I get down low here, and interestingly in their collapsed position, you can see that the Andor is actually lower than the Opticron is. Um, that's probably due to the fact that this has three section legs, the Opticron only has uh, two section. Obviously this does an awful lot more, it's much newer naturally um, and the other thing which I'm just going to demonstrate now when I fold them up this is where the real difference is, is in terms of portability and usability for me. So this is where the real difference is in the two tripods. That's the Andor fully folded up 
minus its quick release plate, which is currently still on the camera, but that's in its fully folded state. As you can see, the tripod head is quite bulky and sticks out. The legs fold in nice and neatly, uh, but you've got the handle that sticks out a little. And then of course, it's still considerably longer than the Andor, as you can see there. The Andor obviously folds over on itself. It has a ball head, so it's much more compact and it's probably a little bit wider overall in terms of um, the overall diameter, but not hugely because if you look at the end of this one and then compare it with the end of this one, um, I dare say there's not much in it at all. So, so far I'm pleased with this. I'm pleased with how it looks. Uh, I'm pleased with how it operates in just at this first attempt at uh, manipulating it and using it. So all that remains now is to actually get out and use it and see how it performs. Um, I'll just give a quick sort of view of, uh, of it with various cameras on that I'm likely to be using on it. None of my cameras are hugely heavy. And just to wrap this up, there will, in addition to the ones that you've seen there, which are uh, my budget sort of video cameras, the EOS M and the 650D, which are used with Magic Lantern uh, RAW. In addition to that, there will be times I'll be using film cameras for photography on this. And I have a few old compact uh, 35mm cameras, um, a Rolli, uh, a couple of roll eyes and um, an Olympus XA and some some other gen general odds and sods and a couple of uh, 35 millimeter SLRs, but nothing hugely heavy. So I'm not overly concerned in regards to the weight bearing. Uh, there is, it does have a weight rating. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I'll pop it in the description below. So all that's left is to just get a weight of this to let you know the weight and we're done. So I'll pop that down below here. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. And hopefully I will be posting an update on this uh, in a few months after it's had a bit of use. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.